Hey guys, welcome back to Blue Tongue TV. I'm Joe Ball, uh, and on today's episode, we're going to have a look at some um, basic Blue Tongue husbandry, which covers outdoor keeping and indoor keeping. So, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm fortunate enough to live in sunny Queensland, and um, on top of that, that means that I can keep um, my blue tongues outside uh, all pretty much all year round. In some cases, they, they do actually stay outside all year round. And um, when I decided that I wanted to keep blue tongues outside, I came up with a, a, a blueprint for a cage which um, basically looks like this. You know, this, this is the final product and there was a couple of prototypes along the way, but this is basically it. So um, what you've got here is essentially what looks like a rabbit hutch and the original idea came from a rabbit hutch. And um, what you've got is you've got a front section and a back section. In the front section here, as you can see, you've got blue tongues, which are actually basking in the sun. Uh, and the sun can either hit them from on high or with the side screens here um, you can actually get the low elevation sun and what I put on the side screens here is actually a fly screen which um, stops the animals actually rubbing their noses on them so yeah that's the front section and then in the back section here which can be accessed through this hole um, I give them a nice deep um, litter of hay to bury in. Skinks being terrestrial animals love to bury uh, and, and, and that gives them that, that opportunity to do just that and also to get, get out of the, um, the open space of the front and to get down and sleep at night um, as the colder temperatures set in. So um, there you have it, there's a basic outdoor setup cage. Also obviously I can feed the animals here, I can put water bowls and food down for them in the front here. So there is an age-old question with lizards uh, and that is how important UV is uh, and whether they actually do or don't need it. I think that that question when it comes to things such as dragons I don't really think there is a question there, you know, it's actually essential that they have UV so that they're able to allow the body to um, absorb, um, well, use vitamin D to create uh, the correct vitamins for bone structure, calcium and the like. Um, for blue tongues it's debated somewhat, um, to the point where there is keepers that actually keep animals inside all the year round and supplement through diet. Um, that isn't what I do here. I do keep my animals outside and I actually think that the animals do um, do better for having access to natural UV. I do keep animals inside as well um, but they all do end up outside at some point and I do think that the vigour of these animals is only enhanced by having access to natural UV. With the outdoor enclosures, obviously in the Queensland sun, it's a pretty warm day today and in summer it gets up to 40 degrees. These guys actually need a little bit of additional sun shelter. So what I do is um, I, um, I created a shade sail scenario which completely covers the animals 24 seven. So on the hot days, all they're going to be is sat under there at what would be ambient shade temperature. Um, and then on top of that, uh, as we know, Queensland does suffer also from rain deluge. At the end of those hot days, you can often get a downpour of rain, which these shade sails are also waterproof, sun reflectant and waterproof. When the deluge of rain comes, it just runs off and runs away. So uh, every single one of the animal's needs is accounted for within these cages. Okay, so indoor keeping. Um, as I said, I do breed and keep my animals outdoors, but obviously when the babies are born um, and growing animals up, I'm gonna need uh, other locations to keep them, so on and so forth. So 
But what I tend to do is keep them in these racks like this of different sizes. So um, here you have a 40 litre rack, which I would use for um, sort of um, small animals up to sub-adult. And in these racks, this is how I'd lay it out. So I'll, I'll put sort of seven or eight pieces of newspaper thick like that. A nice bit of hay for them to bury in. Um, a rock which holds this in place and allows them to shed. And then also you've got the water bowl and the food. Now, um, the food that I use is these dried um, cat food pellets. And I also use another dried complete diet for blue tongues, which is there. Now, both these dried foods contain uh, calcium, sorry, vitamin D3 and calcium. Uh, which means that there is the right supplements in the diet to, sub, to, to supplement the fact that whilst inside they don't have UV. Um, on top of that, I also use um, a, um, a vitamin oil, which I rub um, every sort of couple of months on the back of the animal, which also gives you a vitamin supplement. So, uh, and then each tub is heated from the back of these racks. Um, if, you, if you look in there, you can actually see aluminium heat tape, which covers heat cord, which allows um, heat to come through the bottom of the tub, which enables these animals, being terrestrial, to get some nice belly heat, which works really well for them. And these tubs work well for me, like I say, until I get them big enough for them to go outside. Um, so yeah, you've got 40 litre tubs and you've got 80 litre tubs for larger animals. Okay, so I often get questions on how to keep blue tongues. Um, and I often also see um, threads on forums about comparing uh, ease of keeping of different species with one another. And um, that sort of made me think about how easy blue tongues are to keep when compared to other lizards. And I think it's something that um, a lot of people aren't aware of. I mean, you, you've got things such as bearded dragons, which need insects. They need every, you know, all their insects dusted with calcium. They need high amounts of UV um, to chop up fresh vegetables and this and that. And, and you know, it really is quite a full on experience. Um, with blue tongues, um, that whole keeping experience is a whole lot easier. For a start, you don't actually have to have any live animals to feed these guys. You don't have to keep insects or, or things like that. Their UV requirements, as we've discussed, are quite minimal. Um, yes, they do, do need it, but nowhere near the same quantity that, say, a bearded dragon would. Um, their diet can be done with dried food, um, which contains all the right nutrient balances in there. Uh, and by using that dried food, you never have to wash up any bowls because of the fact that it's dry. You don't have any wastage because it can stay in the cage all the time, um, which in turn means that the animals have access to food all the time. You don't have to constantly prepare fresh food, so on and so forth. And as you can see, as a result of that, you've got these really, really healthy animals, which can also be kept in simple systems such as these plastic tubs uh, and live a very, very healthy, happy life.
today, guys, for, for all the husbandry side of keeping blue tongues. I'm Joe Ball. Thanks for watching Blue Tongue TV. So yeah, that's that's it. That's all, that's all from the husbandry side of things. Um, once again, you've been watching Blue Tongue TV. I'm Joe Ball, and. Um, <laughs> I nearly said this is happy skin time. Oh man, this is happy skin time. <laughs>